Walker. I am also in charge of our MS4 program, which is a stormwater um, program. Uh, the Rain Barrel Workshop is being brought to you by the Town of Emmitsburg, and on behalf of the Chesapeake Bay Trust, we received a grant uh, about a year ago in order to um, offset the prices of the rain barrels for you all. So basically, the rain barrels that uh, you may be purchasing or already have are $50 originally, and for $25 you can get pretty much a good bargain here. Um, we also have been distributing uh, educational flyers um, in your mail. You've probably seen it in your sewer and water bills recently. Um, we are required to conduct a quick pre and post workshop survey, so we appreciate if you take it. It helps us um, with the grant final report. Um, we will also email you another survey in a few months just asking you how you liked your barrels, if you installed them, etc. So we appreciate if you would email us back on that one. Um, I would like to introduce, well the mayor is here, I'd like to introduce Mr. Mayor Don Briggs. Hello. He's eating cookies over there. <laughs> and Miss Jenny Willoughby. Um, Ms. Willoughby is the sustainability manager for the city of Frederick and she's doing this on her own free time so we really appreciate her coming down and volunteering her time. So thank you Jenny. You're welcome. So um, I used to build and install rain barrels and uh, that's how I got started in this many years ago and uh, I ran a program for the Interstate Commission on the Potomac River Basin uh, for about seven years. So. Um, we used very similar barrels to this, a little bit of a different design, but something similar. And the concept is still the same, so I'm just gonna give you all some basic information. And um, there's so many different ways to install them and use them. I'm gonna tell you what not to do, and um, then you guys can take it from there and sort of be creative with it. Um, so the first thing is, you all might remember this. Oh, he's gonna take up your surveys. So you can't change your answers. <laughs> and then we'll find out how bad of a teacher I am because we're going to do a post one too. Um, so, so you all may remember this. Um, what year was this? Oh gosh, I don't even remember. I don't even remember what year this was, but it could have been last year or 2018. You know, I mean, we had so many storms um, that came through and just flooded us. I don't know about you guys up here, but in the city. We got knocked out a bunch of times um, with some floods. So um, what do you do with all that extra water? Now this rain barrel, this particular barrel can hold about 60 gallons. Um, the, so if you calculate, how many, how many uh, pounds is a gallon? Seven? Eight. Eight. So just kind of do a little bit of math. Um, if you have, if you have a, a 50 gallon rain barrel times eight, how much is it? 400 ish, <laughs> 60, it's a little bit more than that. So just, you know, remember that throughout this whole process, how much this is gonna weigh. And also remember that 400 really isn't that much. It doesn't hold that, or I mean, uh, 60 gallons is not that much. It doesn't hold as much rain as it's gonna fall. We also have drought, I mean, so that's, that's where these things are really gonna come in handy, is when you have a drought. Because it's gonna fill up during a rain event, and then when we have the dry times, you're actually gonna be able to use the water in here. You're gonna be able to use it for your vegetable gardens and uh, your flower gardens and everything else. You don't wanna pull from your wells or your city water if you can help it, because we may be under water restrictions. You just never know with the way that the climate is changing on us. We have no idea what we're in store for this season. Um, it could be really dry. I mean, we didn't even have a winter really this year, so who knows what's going to happen this summer. So rain is, a, is an interesting water source. 47% um, of the U.S. population uses surface water and 53% uses groundwater, so it's about half and half. And surface water is lakes, streams, that kind of stuff. Groundwater is if you have a well, that's what you're pulling from. And rainwater isn't either one of those yet. It hasn't run off from the land and gone into surface water and it hasn't soaked through the soil to become groundwater yet. So it hasn't absorbed all those minerals or anything. It doesn't, doesn't really, ha it hasn't captured all that stuff. Um, so it's just plain water. It's almost like distilled water basically. Until it hits your roof and then it picks up all kinds of interesting things. <laughs> um, 
using rain barrels and rainwater will reduce your dependence on treated or well water for landscape use. And that's really key, especially when we are in dry times. We want to make sure that we're reducing that impact on our wells and our surface water if we can help it. Conserving limited water resources. And was anybody here in 99 and 2002? We had some really severe droughts. Um, they limited, they restricted water. You might remember that. They released water from the Jennings Randolph Reservoir because there was not enough flow by in DC. It takes nine days for that water to get from Jennings Randolph Reservoir down into DC. And everybody with their intakes was taken in water as it goes down, so they have to release enough. So that's kind of what we're talking about. Those are sort of the things that we want to avoid if we can help it and be prepared for. Um, lessen the impact of stormwater runoff. Does everybody know what stormwater runoff is? It's okay if you don't. It's just the stuff that hits, um, so it's an impervious surface, like a rooftop or a parking lot or a driveway. It hits that and it just runs off into the street and goes into the nor nearest storm drain. We hope that it goes into the soil and soaks through the soil and feeds the, the plants and the trees and everything else. But when you have a lot of impervious surface, it usually just runs off and goes to the nearest storm drain and then goes into the nearest creek or waterway without being treated at all. There's no filter or anything in those storm drains. It just all takes all the trash and the oil and everything else from the roadway and takes it right to the, into the creek. So we're trying to reduce the amount of stormwater runoff that comes from our, our properties. And using a rain barrel is a really good way to do that because you're going to disconnect your downspout and put it in here. And you're going to use this water in your landscape. So it reduces that pollution from the stormwater runoff. It contains no dissolved minerals or added chemicals. The only thing it captures is when it hits your rooftop. So whatever it's getting on your, on your roof, bird poop or whatever, keep that in mind. Um, that's what it's gonna, what's gonna be in here. Uh, there have been some studies that show that an asphalt roof is fine as long as it's been aged a little bit, but don't use it on your vegetables for the first few years. Once it's been there for a few years, it's fine. It, all the, the junk has been shown to not be affected not affecting your vegetable crops. And there's been a study going on at Hood showing they've actually been using um, rainwater for their vegetable gardens and they've tested it and they haven't found any problems whatsoever. So um, they've tried to figure out which chemicals are you know, hitting their plants. Um, of course, the collected rainwater tides over your plants, like I said, during times of drought. And during times of adequate or excessive rainfall, the rainwater doesn't contribute to stormwater problems. Now this is only 60 gallons, so it's only 60 gallons that you're taking out of the system. We'll go over how much is actually coming down in a little bit. That would have been helpful if I hit that before, wouldn't it? <laughs> Message from our legal department. I am not an attorney. Um, my information is not intended to be specific for your site. You're gonna have to figure that out for yourself, but I'm gonna give you some ideas to get you started your responsibility to be safe and comply with all your applicable laws, codes, and covenants. Hopefully, does anybody live in an HOA? No? Okay, go. Oh, you do? Do they restrict rain barrels? If they well, do... Our neighbors have them, so... Okay, I was going to say, if they do, I'll not. show you how to hide them. That's <laughs> not. <laughs> because I don't like HOAs, and I don't like what they, what they make people do. So, or not do. Um, so, of course, all you have to have is a roof, a downspout, a rain barrel, and rain. And really, how much can you save? So, when you look at it, an inch of rainfall in a thousand square feet of surface area is going to yield 623 gallons of water. So, over the course of a season, a barrel can save you about 1,400 <coughs> gallons of water. Now, let's go back up to that 623. How many are in this barrel? 60, right? How many more? 623 gallons. It's a lot. It's 500 <coughs> plus, right? So, and how many inches do we usually get in a rainstorm in summer? At least one. At least one inch. So every time it rains, you're going to get 623 gallons. You have a thousand square foot roof come into this barrel, okay? Right, so you can only keep one. You can only keep one barrel full. So what are you gonna do with the 500 extra gallons of water that comes out of this overflow hose? 
hopefully you're going to put it to a rain garden or some sort of garden that can accept the overflow and so let it soak through the soil slowly. Okay, because you're going to have, this thing will overflow. You're going to have water coming out of here. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Here's how quickly a barrel will fill. On a 750 square foot surface, an eighth of an inch is a whole barrel. Here's your calculations, okay? So if you have three inches of rainfall, you can see your rainfall yield in gallons. Um, you have square feet of flat area. Most of us have fairly large roof space. Let's just say uh, square feet of flat area. If you go all the way to 1,000 with an eighth of an inch of rainfall, you're going to get 78 gallons. Okay, with one inch, you're going to get that 623. With the three, 1869. So you got to figure out what you're going to do with the rest of that water. And that's why stormwater is such an issue because all that's coming down your downspout right now and going right into wherever it goes, wherever your downspout's directed to. So that's why we're doing this workshop is to make you mindful of where all your stormwater is going and be able to use some of it for your landscape and hopefully disconnect at least one downspout. If you have four downspouts, that's a quarter of your stormwater that you've diverted from the storm drain system, which is pretty awesome. And of course, yes, it's possible to have too much of a good thing. <laughs> so you can overwhelm this barrel fairly easily. And trust me when I say this thing will fill very, very quickly. I remember I set up my first rain barrel. I had 10 minutes. The storm was coming. I could see it come in. I set it up and the storm ran through and that thing was completely full in another 10 minutes and it had water coming out of the overflow. So at three quarters of an inch an hour, your barrel's gonna fill in 10 minutes. We have about an inch of rain for a lot of our storms in the summer. <coughs> so your rain barrel is gonna have basic features on it. And the cool thing about these barrels is um, one, the first thing is they have a screw top lid. It's like a mason jar of pickles, okay? So you can unscrew the lid and take out this screen, which after every storm, you're gonna need to come and take this screen and shake it out and clean it out, because otherwise you're gonna have gunk in here and it'll clog it up, and then it'll start to spill over the top because it can't get through the screen, okay? The second thing is you have two spouts, on, two spigots on this thing. You've got this guy here, this is for a watering can, and then you've got this one down here. This one's the most important one, um, because you wanna be able to access all the water so I'm glad you have one at the bottom here. Um, you can put in whatever kind of valve you want on that. It's just a standard hose bib. On all of mine, I daisy chain mine together. I'll show you that in a minute. I always have a quick connect, put that on there, and then I have a Y splitter. And I just move this to my barrels, whatever barrel I'm using, or my garden hose or whatever. I have a bunch of these, and you just screw that into the, to the fitting. This is just all that is it's just a this one's just an on off valve that's all it is it's tight you might want to grease it um, if you have arthritis get the ones with the big handles because those will make it easier for you to turn it on and off do you know what I'm talking about they have like a big red handle get those because they're much better um, so you can trade this out make it your own do whatever you want these fittings are all available at your local hardware store. It's a three quarter inch standard hose fitting. That's what you'll find. This will fit a garden hose. You just screw it right on there or put one of these guys on there too. Doesn't matter. However you want to do it. Um, and then you have an overflow hose. Make sure this is directed somewhere where it can accept the rainwater. Um, otherwise you're going to be in trouble because you don't want it going wherever. You want it to direct to your garden. Um, the other thing, which we'll talk about in a minute, is this. If you want one, you can have one, he says. These are super cheap, easy to find at your hardware store. I will explain this in a minute. Um, so that's the basic features of it. This is a food grade barrel. These held pickles in them. 
If you see a terracotta one, those with the same kind of screw top lid, those held olives. And then they also have juice barrels as well. Um, I like the screw top lid because I can get into it at the end of the season and clean it out. You're gonna have a bunch of mung that gets through the screen here. Just, um, it's almost like fine sediment and you gotta clean it out. Otherwise it's gonna sit there and it'll start to stink. So you got you gotta clean it out every once in a while. I always clean mine out at the end of the season, just hose them out, tip them upside down and store them that way. Show you that in a second too. So here are the steps to setting up your barrel. The first step, do not go cutting on your downspout yet. <laughs> Leave that alone for now. You want to level your foundation and set it up, whether you use pavers, bricks. I usually use big, um, um, what do you call them? You know what I'm talking about? Cinder blocks, thank you. Yes, I usually use cinder blocks. Mine are four high on one, and the daisy chain one next to it is three high. So um, depending on how much gravity you need, part of my um, yard is uphill from the barrels if they were down on the ground, so I had to raise them up in order to use the water that's over there. Because I got, I got to get the water over to that point, so it's got to be higher than my garden over there. So keep that in mind. Um, mine also makes it easy to put a um, watering can underneath it. All of mine have spigots, so you can access the water in each barrel even if they're daisy chained together. So what will happen is if you daisy chain them, you'll get the water in one, you link up your overflow to the next one, and then eventually you need to have an overflow on the end of one, at the end of the chain of barrels, make sure there is an overflow somewhere, and then the, the downspout goes into the other one. So just um, keep that in mind if you want to do that. It's fine to do that. But set up your foundation first, make sure it's sturdy. You can build a deck if you want to. Just make sure it holds 500 pounds <laughs> because that's how much each of these is gonna weigh. So if you have two of them, make sure it holds 1,000 pounds. So whatever you build, build it to hold all that weight. Like you're having a big old party of, with elephants. Here's kind of how mine are set up. Um, this one's on landscape pavers, and you can see it's daisy chained together. So you can see that the downspout goes into the one, and then see the green hose linking them together? It drops down to the next barrel, fills that one up, and then you can see the overflow right there on the corner that's going <coughs> to a garden. So they have two barrels full of 120 gallons there. This one is set up not quite as high as mine, but Similarly, because it's on cinder blocks, set it up that high so that I can get the, it's gravity fed, right? I don't have a pump in here. So I, and I don't want a pump because I'll just burn it up. I'll forget that I have it on and I'll pump out all the water and I'll forget and I'll be paying for pumps all the time. So I just set it up high so I get plenty of pressure coming out. The higher up you put it, the more pressure you have. Here's a deck installation. This, this is actually, if you want to see it, it's on Montague Lane. It is at the extension office. They, um, of course, are very into safety. So somebody built them a giant deck <laughs> that is very sturdy for these two barrels. Um, so this is how they had theirs set up. And this was before they, um, they have a rain garden now that they have everything linked to. But um, they had theirs chained together too. All right, here's the key. This is where everybody gets confused. How do you divert the water from your downspout to the barrel? Okay, so you have a downspout, you've got one long piece, right? What I recommend doing, once you have this thing in place, you have your foundation, you've got it the height that you want it. Mine are taller than me. Some people don't like things taller than them. I don't really care. Um, just once it's in place, then you can start marking your downspout. So you can see this has the, the solid piece up there, straight. There should be a, bo a bottom piece here. And what they did was they just cut about a foot out and replaced it with this guy. So you can also do it that way if you want to, if you want to get one of the big flexi spouts. But then you'll need to put your uh, downspout back together for the winter. You don't want this thing hooked up in the winter. So 
if you have one of these and you just clip a piece out of your downspout, in the winter you just return it back to normal and it becomes one long downspout again. You take it away from the barrel and direct it back down to the other piece of the downspout. I will show you that. That's what it looks like. So you have it coming from the top piece. There's the bottom piece that's secured. In the winter, that's what it will look like. Does that make sense to everybody? Super easy. You make two cuts on your um, on your downspout, that's it. But you wouldn't leave your tank facing upwards though. Leave my tank. So the tank is facing upwards though. If it's winter time, you either store that somewhere or face it down? Yes. So this one has not been stored yet for winter. Okay. Yes. What I usually do, I empty everything out of it. I clean it out. Make sure my screen's still intact. If it is, fantastic. If it's not, I make a new one, pitch it, pitch the old one, uh, make a new one. Take off all the components. And I store these in somewhere dry and not as cold, not where they can freeze. Um, the reason is, if they have any bit of water in them and they freeze, you'll start to lose th that ball valve in there. You'll end up with a drip, 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 and you don't want that running right next to your foundation. Um, so I take these out and I store them actually inside. I put them in my junk drawer in a baggie. Um, if you have any plastic pieces, those can actually be stored in a baggie inside of the barrel. Tip it upside down and leave it that way over winter. That way you don't lose those pieces, at least, in your junk drawer, because I'll lose them. Um, you will have to replace parts every once in a while. I think my, mine are five years old, going on five years, and the ball valves are starting to go, so I'm gonna replace all my valves this year, um, including my Y. This is my old Y splitter. It's also going, so I'll just replace everything so that I have fresh ones. Um, they go, I mean, they're out in, out in the elements all the time, so you're gonna have to replace bits and pieces. Are, are there any other questions about that? Does everybody understand how to do it? It's totally okay if you don't. I get it. When I first looked at it, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, lady. <laughs> so, there's lots of diverter options. You can find some of these online. You can find them at the hardware stores. I don't use diverters on mine, but you can do it if you choose. This one, the Y splitter, um, so you'd have one piece of downspout that is connected normally, and then the other one gets diverted to the barrel. If you find that the barrel's full, you can go over and flip that, see the little thing? Um, the little lever, you can flip it to the other side. So it will either collect in the rain barrel or it will collect and go down your downspout. Same thing with this, it diverts part of the water uh, from the downspout, so you're not getting that huge flush, you're getting some of that water coming down the downspout. And then this one, this one's splashy, I do not like it. I would not recommend it, because <laughs> um, it goes, it splashes out of it sometimes. If we have a really heavy rainstorm, I found that it's kind of coming out of it and not staying in the in the confines of that little doohickey. That splashy. But you give it a try. If you if you dig it, I mean awesome. Try it out. See if it works for you. So here's what you this is remember what I said about arthritis? If you have arthritis, that's the handle I want you to get. It's just a lever on off. You won't have to keep twisting it. It's, it's not easy. You don't have a lot of grip strength. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can use this rainwater for. Gardening, you can use it for bird baths, you can use it for washing your dog, you can use it for if you'd like to wash your car with it, that's fine. Do not drink it and don't cook with it. <laughs> um, those are the limitations. <laughs> Uh, because it's not treated water. All, it's just rainwater and it comes from your roof and picks up bird poop and all sorts of other interesting things, which is fine for your garden because that's gonna go through soil and everything else. If you add soap to it and you're washing your car with it, nobody cares you're not licking your car, I hope. So, you know, that. Here's the rain barrel in action, um, what it looks like. 
This was a set low, so it didn't have a lot of pressure. <laughs> her name is Natalie. Her mother was the one who came up with the basic design for the rain barrels. Um, that's her. She was a master gardener here in Frederick. And that's Maggie the dog. Maggie's still with us. <laughs> um, but you can wash your dog with it. It's totally fine. It won't hurt anybody. <laughs> I forgot it. all this stuff is in there. OK. So, whoops, go back. This is how you'd set it up. You can um, step them down like I have, or you can leave them like this. The water will go over to the next barrel, whether it's stepped down or not. It does not have to be. Uh, I step mine down just because I don't need it to be that tall. I've got one that's set over here and one that's kind of set over here. And this one I use for water over here, and this one I use for over there, and the garden's higher. This is how you set it up. You just put a, um, a connector. Just make sure that you have the overflow set on one side. It has to be there. Otherwise, you'll get yourself in trouble when you start spilling on the top and you don't want that because it's right next to your foundation. And what kind of connector is that? It's just a piece of flexible tubing. It's the same stuff this is. Oh, okay. You'll have to drill another hole in the side of this, but that's okay. Just get a hole saw. Drill another hole, and if you want to connect it, it's totally fine. You're not going to hurt anything. Get a, get a compression fitting, put it in here. A, another little piece of uh, hose, super cheap at the hardware store, and another um, connector for the other barrel, um, compression fitting. Set it up that way. Get some hose clamps. I always use hose clamps on mine. Um, pretty easy. And like I was saying, I use quick connectors on mine. Um, so just, you know, it makes it easier. I don't have a lot of grip strength anymore, so quick connectors make it easy for me to move my hoses around, that kind of thing. Um, so I always have quick connectors on all of my stuff. Also, if you have a fire, it's easy to hook your hose up. So, here's a basic shaft valve, and that's similar to the one that you have on here. This is the screw top or screw one. A little easier. These little thumb ones are harder. This is what I just showed you the Y splitter, and mine's actually on a quick connect. She's already got some rain barrels set up, so if you really want to see something in action, you may want to go over and have a look at what her setup looks like and see what might work for you, too. Um, you can use a pump. Just remember that if you leave it running, if you use a pond pump or something, that water's going to come out eventually, and you'll burn up your pump if you leave it on without any water in there. So just keep that in mind. And it will come out fast, depending on what size pump you have. Um, it's going to come out fast. I recommend a hose reel. I never use them, but I do recommend them. <laughs> I don't use it because I'm lazy, but most people are not. This is a hose extender. You can put it on your fence or in your house or how, wherever you want to put it. This one is a similar reel, but it just lays in there. Remember how I said I would teach you how to hide the barrel in case you have an HOA? Um, so there's a lot of different ways to hide the barrel that I've seen that are really creative. This one's pretty fun. Um, it's a, a double barrel, and it's just hidden. See, they're going to start to use this wood pile in the winter, but they're not using it because it's summer, so it's a great spot to hide it. So they're going to put the rain barrels away in the winter, and they put them in the garage. So you won't even see them. Uh, you can use... Uh, Vegetation screening, you can't even see it behind that, or, or lattice work. And then at the end of the season, again, when the green's not there anymore, you're putting it away anyway. So, can you find it in this picture? <laughs> it's actually behind that crepe myrtle by the chimney. There it is. <laughs> so, and that's a great spot for it because it's in the shade. Um, 
um, your water won't be so hot. You're not going to torch your plants by putting it, you know, mine all sit out in the sun, so the water's super hot, but my plants don't usually care. Um, but if you have sensitive plants, you may want to try to put it in a, in a shadier spot like this, hidden behind some crate needles. All right, now we're going to get into some safety tips. This is a little overboard. I don't expect you to put flashing on it and everything. This is at Fort Dietrich. And of course, it's government, so they have to be, you know, like don't touch the barrel, don't drink from this. Um, you do want to secure the barrel in some way when it's empty. So if you've used all the water in it, which is what I hope you will do, you'll use it between rainfall. Um, so you'll empty out the barrel between from you know one rainstorm to another so that you can accept more rain in it. Um, it's going to get kind of floppy. It's going to fall off its stand. Mine has rolled down the hill. Luckily, I have a fence to prevent it from going into traffic. <laughs> but um, don't do the things that I do. I do stupid things so you don't have to. Um, they use flashing on here. You can also put two peg, you know, um, T posts or whatever you have hanging around. You know, you can put in some posts right in front of it so it can wobble on its stand when it's empty, but it won't fly off of it. You know what I mean? It'll just move around like this, but you're stopping it by putting some posts in the way. Um, you don't even have to put flashing around it, just a couple posts around it will keep it. I've also seen bungee cords just to keep it while it's, you know, it's empty, a bungee cord is not gonna do you any good when the thing is full. So, but when it's empty, you can bungee it to the house if you so desire. It's just a cup hook that they used, um, which is fascinating. Uh, I hope they're not trying to do that when it's full in winter, full of ice. That's a bad idea. Never ever let this thing full of, fill with ice. Again, I do stupid things so you don't have to. Um, it will get very roly-poly on the bottom and it will roll off its stand and imagine 500 pound block of ice falling on you. I had a watch on, it broke my watch, it did not break me. I was very lucky. Um, so, don't do that. <laughs> I needed to try it out. I needed to see exactly what it would look like if you let this thing fill with water and freeze. <laughs> because I always tell people not to do that and I said, well I need to see what, what happens. What happens is it bows out on the bottom so it's really unstable and now you have a 500 pound roly poly block of ice. So don't do it. That's why I say empty it out, <laughs> tip it upside down so it can't accept any water in the winter, can't freeze. Um, never have a, a, a barrel where you're not sure where it came from. I'm telling you where these came from. This was a pickle barrel. You know, I used to make them and I had pickle juice all over me a lot. Um, or olive barrels, anything that was food grade is totally fine to use. Don't use anything where you're not sure where it came from. Never use a, you know, anything that had motor oil or anything like that. It's not safe to use in your garden. You don't want that going into your soil. Never use a trash can. If you ever see somebody using a trash can, go up and tell them they're, they shouldn't do that. Don't tell them they're dumb. I mean, I want to say that, but don't do that because this thing is meant to hold dry weight, not wet. So it can split under the weight. That's a big no-no. That's right next to your foundation. You're gonna end up with a trash can full of water right next to your foundation, which is exactly what you're trying to prevent. <laughs> you don't want that. That's what this barrel is designed to do. This is meant to hold liquid. That's what you want, a, a barrel that's thick enough to hold liquid. Also, that does not have a, a secure lid on it. No secure lid. That's how raccoons die, right there. They go in to get a drink of water and they end up drowning. And then you have a dead raccoon and you can't figure out the smell. <laughs> and then you have a little dead bloated raccoon in there. So never ever leave the, it open topped like that. Always have your lid secure with the screen on it. Um, this isn't really a great option either because you can't put a good screen on it. It's not easy to, to screen out the mosquitoes and that's one of our biggest problems here is mosquitoes. So we wanna do whatever we can to stop that. This is a bad idea. Please don't do this either. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> so make sure it has a proper foundation. Remember what I said, you can build a deck, but make sure it can hold the weight. And of course, you know, your 
you're doing this for the Chesapeake Bay. Everything that you can do to conserve water and reuse water, divert water from you know, getting into the storm drains, that's awesome. That's the whole point of it. If you want to go further, become a Baywise la uh, certified landscape, you can do that through the county. They have a whole program. So, remember what I asked you where this water is going to go? Where are you going to put it? Where do you put your rainwater? Where does it go? Uh, just out in the lawn, but I have an acre and a third. Okay, so you have plenty of space to put that water. So, you could make a rain garden. You can do, if you have a riparian buffer or a big open space, wildflower meadows, hummingbird or butterfly gardens. The idea would be that you would remove turf because that can become as impervious as concrete in some cases. Um, so the water doesn't really flow through it. If you look at it where it's hitting the curb, the water's flowing underneath the turf layer and sliding right out underneath it sometimes. It's because the soil is so compacted it can't absorb it. So it looks like it's going into the soil, but it's actually popping out right at the curb. Um, and instead of concrete or asphalt, you can install turf block or pervious pavers. If you're thinking about doing some sort of project, um, even gravel is, is better. So here's what a rain garden is. If anybody was curious, it's a saucer shaped uh, garden. It's a like a natural depression or a depression that you make in your yard that can um, let the water sit there for a little while. I'm not talking about days, I'm talking about hours. Um, we don't want it sitting there for days because again, we don't want the mosquitoes. But it allows the water to soak through the soil uh, slowly and the, and the plants to take it up. So we don't want those standing water in here. If you ever are building a rain garden and you get standing water, you're testing your soil out, it's not a good spot for a rain garden unless you do some really heavy duty soil amendments. Um, but the cool thing is that it will help filter toxins because soil is a natural filter. And of course it's on site stormwater management. That stormwater will never make it to the storm drain. So it's, you're taking it completely out of the system and putting it right back into the ground. You're getting groundwater recharge at that time, which is great. A riparian buffer is just um, a row of trees next to a stream. This was taken, I don't remember the year, it was in the 90s, 10 years later. So it's what can happen. And that stream is now shaded. That's exactly what a riparian buffer is. And you can put this water to the riparian buffer and those trees will take it up too. So native plant gardens. The cool thing about native plants is that they don't require a lot of maintenance. And they can sur usually survive drought as well as some periods of inundation. So when we get the really wet times, they'll be okay. And when we get the really dry times, they'll also be okay. So they provide habitat. And of course, you want to have diverse plants. Um, they will take up and filter that water. They keep the weeds down. And they improve your soil structure because every time st stuff breaks down and they start to move through the soil, you're getting places for critters to grow, you're getting diverse um, critters in there, you're getting all kinds of uh, pockets for air and water to go. So it's not just lawn. Um, turf is not really great habitat for anything. So um, the idea is that we're improving habitat as well as collecting stormwater. And that is all I have for you. Let me make sure I covered everything on your quiz. Uh, I think I covered everything on the quiz. Now, if you need to replace this screen, this is that um, mesh screen. It's not the metal screen. So all you have to do is go to the hardware store and grab a short roll of this, cut yourself a new piece, and replace it. Sometimes you'll get nicks in it, sticks will you know, come down from the downspout and, and nick it. I encourage you to replace it at that time because you don't want mosquitoes to get in through that. Just, it's super cheap, just replace it. It's worth it, <laughs> I promise. Are there any questions? What would you suggest to keep wasps out in the wintertime? I got wasps that fly around all the time. Wasps in your, wow, yeah. really? When I go to store that, Take the spigots out. Mm -hmm. Leaves an open hole. I would stuff yeah. a rag in it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Um, I don't have that problem with mine. I've seen that though at our storage location where we had ours. 
We got wasps. we got wasps Everywhere. in them um, because we didn't have we didn't store them with anything on them because we didn't want it sitting out in the elements. So we would only put them on when we sold them. Um, you can't keep a chair outside without a wasp putting a nest on. It. My goodness. <laughs> Um, you have excellent habitat then. <laughs> I would stuff rags in it and put a you know rubber band around it just to keep the critters out um, and keep your screen intact so they can't get in through that. Now I can't say that they won't chew on it. They may chew through the screen. Um. Wasps are territorial. And you can get a wasp nest that's made out of paper and if you hang it, oh. they will not come. Okay, I have, I grew gourds, and I have some that were looked like that, so I painted it as a wasp nest, and I have it hanging on my back porch because I don't have a problem with wasps anymore. Awesome. Got them on my side fence. So you might have something side. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I got them in the sheds. I got two sheds in the back there and there. Oh my gosh. Up along the roof ridge. Um, yeah. There's some ones that build above ground nests yeah. and we found one under. Yeah. I would just stuff <coughs> the holes with rags and that way they can't get through. Are there any other questions? Can you paint these barrels? You can. You'll have to use that Krylon plastic paint and it will come off. It doesn't stick very well. Uh, we've tried. It doesn't, there's nothing that makes them look pretty except if you want to make it a bathing suit you can go and get some lycra from the fabric store and make yourself a little swimsuit for it. That's the best solution I found so far and the most long lasting, although that only lasts for a couple seasons too because it starts to deteriorate in the sun, but it lasts longer than paint. The paint will start to peel off. Even the Krylon plastic that you use for plastic furniture and stuff, it doesn't last that long. So, yeah. Any other questions? Thank you so much, Jenny. Yeah, really appreciate it. I hope you it. enjoy it. And now you have to take another quiz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you guys could just take the, it's the same exact thing. I'm um, just going to show uh, if you learned anything, which I think you all have. And if there's anyone wanting to purchase the ring um, I'll meet you out there outside here. You can just drop me off. Come to one of these if you want it. How long will the barrels be available? They'll be available. And you want it for the growing season. Now we're going to get spring storms. This is the time to put it in right now, actually. <laughs> if you're going to do it, do it now so you can take advantage of it. Yeah, I'm going to install mine. So. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And if you all ever have any questions and Zach can't answer them, you can send